It is Graham here living the dream in February 2023 on the beach here in Puerto del Carmen and you're watching Lazing and Lanzarote, our vacation diary. Hi, I'm Graham and this is my wife Fiona and we have always had a work hard play hard philosophy. From London to New York and of course the Caribbean, we live our dream through travel. And of course, the odd cocktail. And here on YouTube, we create our memories while living our dream. So come and join us as we share our memories with you. and day one of our Lazing and Lanzarote adventure started on the M8 motorway as Fiona and I headed towards Glasgow airport. Our Jet 2 flight from Glasgow down to Lanzarote wasn't departing until 9.30am which in our opinion was an extremely decent hour to be flying on holiday. Putting us on the ground in Lanzarote at around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. The check-in for our flight opened three hours before departure, so Fiona and I were pulling into the long stay car park at Glasgow Airport just after 6.15 a.m. Our plan was to get the bus over to the terminal, check in and get a decent breakfast. So as we head into Terminal 2 here at Glasgow Airport, the old temporary structure known as the St Andrews Building, I should explain that I've done a full trip report on this journey from Glasgow down to Lanzarote. You just need to go back to video number 234 to find it. And back at the Jet 2 check-in at Glasgow Airport, I think Fiona and I were absolutely blown away by both the quantity and quality of all of the Jet 2 staff there to help us get our holiday underway. So with check-in taking less than 10 minutes, Fiona and I were in the main terminal at Glasgow Airport heading to the escalators that would take us upstairs to security screening. Beautiful things we And of course Fiona did take a look around duty free but she didn't buy anything. Next stop breakfast. We did briefly take a look at the pub which was advertising very reasonably priced full breakfasts. However it was very quiet with nobody drinking pints of tenants at this time of the morning but we turned around when we realised it was only these high barstool type tables available and we knew that Frankie and Benny's would probably deliver what we wanted. So as we were led to a decent table Fiona and I enjoyed a full Scottish breakfast. While we waited for our flight to be called after breakfast, Fiona did continue with some retail therapy, but only bought chocolate to go with the overpriced coffee that we would purchase on our 4 hours and 25 minute flight down to Lanzarote. And boarding this morning was via the steps to this Boeing 737-800 in the livery of Jet 2 holidays. Just under four and a half hours, the flight was very uneventful, thank goodness. Fiona read her Kindle and I continued watching series two of Slow Horses on Apple TV Plus that I downloaded onto my iPad ahead of my Wild West adventure in Arizona just a few weeks earlier. So as we started our initial descent into Lanzarote Airport, the captain warned us it was going to be a little bit windy due to a Sahara storm that was blowing in from Morocco in North Africa. And when we didn't notice much on board the aircraft, when I look back at the stats on Flight Radar 24, it is clear that we had been circling to the north of the island as the flight crew and ATC took a decision on what approach we were going to make. And in the end, the decision was taken to approach from the north which meant we would be making our approach over the island of Lanzarote rather than the Atlantic Ocean. And it was at this point we could see for ourselves the effect the Sahara storm was having on the Martian-like landscape of Lanzarote. What can I do? As we 
pulled on the stand. I think Fiona and I commented on how good this service was on board Jet 2 from Glasgow down to Lanzarote and I hope that came through on my trip report. And I think on the week that I edited this video it was announced that Jet 2 were the number one low cost airline in Europe and I can see why. From deboarding, the plane to probably the most easy passport control we've ever experienced at an airport in the world. Fiona and I had collected our bags, we'd gone through customs and we're exiting the airport en route for the Jet 2 private transfer desk. This is where we met another Fiona, Jet 2 private coach transfer Fiona, who took our details and then directed us to bus bay number 10. Again, I've covered the Jet 2 private transfer process on another video. You just need to go back to episode number number 235 to see how Fiona and I get on transferring from Lanzarote Airport to a hotel in Puerto del Carmen. And again, all kudos to Jet2 Holidays. Unlike the vast majority of their competition, they seem to have an endless amount of enthusiastic staff to assist you in the right direction and get your vacation off to a great start. And as a result, Fiona and I were on our way to our private coach that would take us to our hotel. And as I said in our report on this transfer, in Lanzarote, Jet2 2 had already pre-warned us that our airport to hotel transfer would be on a small bus and not a car. And even better news, our transfer would take less than 10 minutes. Just over seven minutes after leaving the airport, we were passing the beach at Puerto del Carmen, which we will show you more of later on in this episode. But for now, we were leaving the beach and entering the residential street near our hotel, which is of course the Pico Paya, a name that I struggled to say throughout this video series. And of course, as you would expect on the channel, I've done a full resort and room tour. You just need to go back one episode to video number 236. And with check-in complete, Fiona and I were off to our room, which was number 125, which was a poolside walkout room, which we had paid a little extra for when we booked this five night vacation. And there was a welcome bottle of champagne in the room waiting for us and while it was clear it wasn't for us we drank it anyway. So for the rest of our Saturday afternoon and day one of Lazing and Lanzarote we sat outside our room in the sunshine enjoying the champagne followed by the warm bar snacks that were available from 5 p.m. And this guys is where I'm going to bring Saturday to a close. We headed out to dinner via the beach and then we enjoyed a fantastic Chinese meal. On Sunday morning we opened the blinds to a pretty promising day here in Lanzarote and first stop this morning was breakfast. There only was one restaurant at this hotel and it was in the basement below reception and because we had an all-inclusive package it included breakfast lunch and dinner. Fiona and I did eat breakfast here every morning. We also had lunch here every day except one when I fancied a walk and something different. A burger of course which I will cover in a later episode but we didn't eat in this all-inclusive buffet style restaurant in the evenings and as I said in my resort and room tour this certainly wasn't a criticism. Part of Fiona's and my holiday is going out at night and eating in a restaurant but our breakfast here every morning was excellent. The vast majority of tourists visiting this resort were British so they absolutely catered for the British customer which included the obligatory toaster that required three passes to get your bread even slightly toasted. And after breakfast Fiona and I decided to go and explore Puerto del Carmen. Leaving one of the two back exits from the resort onto the residential street, we made the three minute walk to the beach. You 
do have to remember, guys, that our Lazing in Lanzarote adventure was filmed during February 2023. So we were visiting out of season and therefore it was always going to be really quiet. But as we walked along this path next to the beach, Phil and I did comment on how clean and well presented this holiday town was. And for February, the weather was beautiful with daytime temperatures around 18 to 20 degrees. For our American viewers, that is between 66 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. When we started walking away from the beach, I think we were entering an area called San Antonio. There were a lot more apartments and hotels, and as you will see shortly, a lot more shops, restaurants, and people. You will also notice that the road network in this area is very good. It's very pedestrian friendly as well, with wide footpaths and a cycle and scooter lane. And just like we saw in many of the American cities that we visited in 2022, you were able to rent electrical powered scooters by the minute, ping for your ride or commute using what we believed was an easy to use smartphone application. You could also rent bicycles too. But anyway, this part of the resort town was a lot busier than the end we were staying in, with plenty of cafes available for that all important caffeine hit. So where are you? I don't know, some place in London, I've got quite sure what little village we've got in. Is this not uh, Puerto del Carmen? I think it would walk fine, no, I don't think this is it. Yeah. No, that's Plato or something or else you go to. So this is the time when we're staying in. Okay. Yeah. I think so. So that says February 2023, living the dream in Puerto del Carmen, Lanzarote. Probably don't hear us because of the wind, but who knows? We're here. Fiona's got it's the nice windswept look. Yeah. Yes, it is about 20 degrees. Just around 70 degrees no, Fahrenheit. 18, 18 so 66. It feels a lot warmer than that. Put a sun on my back. <laughs> well, that's somebody not using a zebra crossing. It was a rather pleasant morning to go for a walk, or I think at this point it was turning into afternoon, heading towards lunchtime. Anyway, the plan was to head back to the hotel for lunch before relaxing by the pool. So we made a shortcut through one of the back entrances into the hotel courtyard, where there were quite a few more people enjoying the sunshine here in Lanzarote in February 2023. And as soon as we got back to the hotel, Fiona and I popped down to the Buffy restaurant for a bite of lunch. And I must admit, guys, that the food was pretty good, even if it did get a little bit boring after a few days. But I do have to compliment the hotel because their desserts were pretty darn good. And after lunch on Sunday afternoon, we simply relaxed by the pool, something we certainly wouldn't be doing in Scotland in February. Bring Sunday to a close. Fiona and I headed out to an awesome little Italian restaurant for pizza. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot we did head back to the hotel in time to get dessert at the Buffy restaurant. After all guys, we were all inclusive, so it would be rude not to. And that brings Sunday to a close.
I'm afraid guys that Monday was a slow news day and Fiona and I simply hung around the pool. However we did venture out that evening for chicken and steak at a local restaurant only a few minutes walk from our hotel. However we did join the movie quiz that evening in the entertainment area and as luck had it we came joint first with 27 points out of 30. Michael Nevin would have been very proud of me because I managed to get the godfather right. And with Fiona proud as punch with a free bottle of champagne we brought Monday to a close. I can only imagine how it is to be with you. Tuesday was February 14th and therefore Valentine's Day, but the weather had sadly taken a turn for the worst. It certainly wasn't sunbathing weather, so Fiona and I decided to go for a walk, and our plan was to have lunch out today. How it is to be with you. And exiting the hotel, we decided to take a different route to the beach this morning. Through the night. I can only imagine us together side by side I can only imagine we're dancing in the moonlight I can only imagine I can only imagine I want to know it may be looking overclassed and grey today guys, but it definitely wasn't that cold. Certainly not cold for February. But we were heading back in the direction of San Antonio, where we last visited on Sunday, because we knew there were plenty of street side bars and restaurants in this part of the town. And as you can imagine, it wasn't that hard to find a pub serving cold beer and burgers. And it was during lunch that the sun decided to finally make an appearance. So we had a very pleasant walk back to the hotel. But the next time I saw your face, nothing I can do. I just have to face the truth. All I want is to be with you. I can only imagine us both loving through the night. I can only imagine us together side by side. From memory, the weather on Tuesday and Valentine's Day remained very changeable. And it was a testament to how cold it got when the cloud came over. Fiona was sunbathing in a fleece and long trousers. But you know guys, there was absolutely nothing we could do about the weather. It was just one of those things and it didn't stop us enjoying our five nights in Lanzarote in February 2023. And as soon as the cloud disappeared and the sun came out, Fiona was back to the room for another change of clothes to continue lazing by the pool. And with Tuesday being Valentine's Day, Fiona and I decided to go out to one of the nicest restaurants we'd had dinner in during our entire lazing in Lanzarote adventure. And you would of course have been 100% correct if you had assumed Fiona and I got back to the hotel in time for dessert. Which would bring Tuesday and Valentine's Day to a close. If Monday was a slow news day, Wednesday was an absolutely no news day guys. The weather wasn't great as you can see and I even managed to do some work that morning. But other than these photographs I've got nothing else to share with you from Wednesday and our last full day lazing in Lanzarote. Unfortunately guys, Thursday was our last day lazing in Lanzarote. So after we returned from our last breakfast, it was time to pack. And while Fiona continued packing, I took a walk down to the beach alone to record some introductions to these video episodes. Give me everything that I need, cause all I see is just you and me.
and after some sunbathing on what was a really beautiful day, Bill and I got dressed, ready to head back to the cold of Scotland. And bang on time, our private transfer was here to take us back to the airport. What we've got together, and it's these nights that feel so right. Yeah. Take it on, you and me can take on the world. We'll just run, we'll high as the sun. stepping off the bus it was time to head into the airport terminal. It's also time to tell you that I've made a full trip report on this journey from Lanzarote back to Glasgow and it will be available after this video so I think it's going to be number 238. And of course it would always help me if you hit the subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified when that next video is published. And of course just like our way through this airport to the hotel five days earlier Jet2 had plenty of staff available on hand to help the customers which I'm sure you will agree with me is such a rare thing these days. Anyway as we entered the international airport here at Lanzarote I started a little bit of a panic when I saw the lines ahead of me for check-in but the good news was that that chaos that you can see in front of me is all for TUI and not JET2 and when we approached the JET2 check-in area it was of course a completely different picture. There were absolutely no lines and even better there were JET2 staff on hand to help. I will talk a little bit more about my views on that in the next episode and of course our trip report from here in Lanzarote back to Glasgow. Anyway back to this episode it was time for Fiona and I to check in and get through security. And of course, on the other side of security, Fiona had to check out the duty-free shop. Our flight was to depart just after 3pm, getting us back into Glasgow at around 7.30pm this evening. It's a pretty decent time to be flying but it does mean that we miss dinner and as a result if I was to do this journey again at this time I would probably pre-book a meal on the flight on the way back to Glasgow. While Burger King was an extremely popular fast food outlet here at Lanzarote Airport Fiona and I chose to order a couple of chicken burgers at this grill restaurant and as usual at an airport they were overpriced but what was more disappointing is this airport at Lanzarote is pretty poor and the terminal is far too small for the number of passengers that travels through it. So finding a seat and a table to sit down and enjoy this overpriced chicken burger was rather difficult. And probably the best thing about Lanzarote Airport is there was an outside space that you could watch the planes. The downside was that this is also where people went to smoke and as a result it was pretty disgusting from a non-smoker point of view. But back in the smoke free terminal it was time for Fiona and I to head to the gate. And again there was plenty of Jet2 staff on hand making sure everybody was completely informed and of course in the right line for boarding. I'll be covering this flight in the next episode in a lot more detail. Over the next four and a half hours we flew into the night making our approach into Glasgow Airport overhead Clyde Bank in a wet and blustery February evening. Up the sky, 
and this put us back in the terminal at Glasgow Airport where we started six days earlier. So as Fiona and I exit the airport terminal en route to the bus stop for the long stay car park, it's time to bring this episode of Lazing in Lanzarote to a close. Just a reminder guys, if you want to watch the next video and our full detailed trip report on the journey back to Glasgow from Lanzarote, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified when the video is published. All that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching.